And so this is also something I wanted to bring into your, your analysis of your website. Now that you're going to redo it, you're going to go back to your website or your app or whatever landing page that you had that you were looking at in the beginning. And I want you to analyze it using the, the conversion formula, motivation, value proposition, incentive, friction and anxiety. I want you to use those five things to look at how can you improve this page? How can you improve it for the user so that it better meets the motivation? It has a clear value proposition, what the person gets rather than what they have to do. It has a clear incentive why they have to do it now. It's easy to do it and they don't feel scared to do it. So you've built the awareness, you've activated people, they're talking about you, they know you exist, they come to your website, they've subscribed to your YouTube channel, your newsletter, there are strong leads, purchase indications, they know what your brand is offering them. Now what? Well, you want to create a billing relationship with them. Having a normal relationship with someone, just a friendly relationship or a relationship of interest or something like that, does not necessarily mean that people are going to buy from you. Right? So you need to find ways in which you can turn that interest into actual purchases or mm, payments or something like that so that your business can grow. So how do you do that? Well, there is a formula for this. And this is the only time I'm going to tell you this is how you should be doing this. Exactly. All the other times you have some options. This time you don't. Okay. So I want you to open your website now uh, or your app or whatever it is that you have. And I want you to have a look at it and I want you to write down what is it that you're telling the user that they're getting on just just open the front page or the like download page. What is it that you're telling the user that they're getting? You can pause the video for now and, and then come back once you've done that. But don't just watch this video before you've done that. Pause the video and boom. All right, welcome back. So here's the thing. Whenever we are trying to optimize a website for conversion rate, and we always focus on this for formula. And I know it looks intimidating to look at, but what it means is this. C stands for conversion, conversion rate, right? So it's out of 100, how many decide to convert? That happens to equal the number of people who are motivated enough to buy from you, find that your value proposition is good enough, feel that they have an incentive to buy now, they are not feeling friction, meaning that they find it easy to purchase from you and they're not scared from purchasing from you. Those five things all go into the blend that makes up for your conversion rate. So what does it mean? I usually say like this, if motivation is high, it's sort of like uh, wanting to go to the toilet, right? In the beginning, when I want to go to the toilet or when I've drank some water, I really don't need to go to the toilet, right? I'm not highly motivated to go to the toilet. So I will be very picky about what toilet to choose. But as the day moves on, I will gradually start getting more and more motivated to go to the toilet. And I will become less and less and less picky about what toilet I choose. And eventually I might not even want to use a toilet. I might just go into the forest or, you know, God forbid. Yeah, you know, so the more I get motivated to do something, the higher my conversion rate, meaning in the case of me wanting to go to the toilet, the more I need to go, the less you know, picky I am, meaning my motivation is higher. So my conversion rate goes up as well. The more motivated I am, the higher the conversion rate. Secondly, value proposition. People are very good or businesses are very good at telling others what they have on their website. We have a thing of this. We have a thing of this. Crappy. What you need to do is to explain what people get when they buy it or when they join. So instead of focusing your language on what you have or the product names, focus on what they do for your visitors, your customers. It might be so easy even as to write in the button, get this now, you know, just using get it now rather than buy this now. Buy is something I have to do. Get is something that I get. If we just change it from buy to get, we actually increase the conversion rates by 20% plus just by changing a button, right? So people are looking for what they get rather than what they have to do to get it. The value propositions should contain everything that you want to give them. So anything from a deal to we are the uh, best quality to, you know, whatever it is that you want to load your product or services with that they get when they choose you rather than someone else, right? That's the value proposition. Incentive then 
becomes why they have to do it now. So this is about saying this is an exclusive offer. It only lasts for 24 hours or we will only have 100 spots for this or whatever it is that you make sure that someone understands I have to sign up or buy something now because if I wait, it might be gone. There's an excellent example from Dutch auctions in, in Holland where they were selling tulips. And what they, how they sell tulips are this. They have a, a finite number of tulips, maybe a million tulips every morning. And then they have a big price for that. Let's say $1,000 for a pack of, of tulips. They have all the buyers in the same room. And the buyer sits back and they look at the price. And they're like, I'm not going to buy at this price. And then the price starts going down. This is what's called a Dutch auction. The price starts going down until a level where one buyer decides to buy tulips at that price. What happens then is that every single person starts buying tulips, every single buyer, because if they do not buy fast enough, all the tulips will be gone. So this is the logic that goes into a good incentive. You need to create a space in time. I mean, Hotels.com is super good at this. They run their 24 hour um, uh, sales, their 72 hour sales. If you're on their website, they're saying two people are looking at this right now, you know. And I know if you're sitting there doing some high fashion or uh, BMW, we cannot do that. That would be crappy on our website. Yes, but maybe you should go with, you want to get this first, right? the first batch of this car because people are buying luxury products. They want to be exclusive and they want to have it before everyone else has it. So you can still work with incentive, but you just have to use a different kind of copy when you do it. All of those, if you're good at motivation, value proposition, incentive, your conversion rate will go up. Now, what pulls away from your conversion rate is if you have a high friction and a high anxiety. Friction, well, if you're making it difficult to buy high load times uh, of your web pages, complicated checkout system, you know, your scent, as I was saying, does not make sense, meaning you change colors and you move things around, you know, it's complicated to get the stuff from you. If that is the case, your friction will go up or the friction for the visitor will go up and the conversion rate will go down. Whew, let's move that away. Let's not do that. Let's use YouTube for sharing videos instead of Vimeo because people do not know how to share a Vimeo link. Weirdly enough, they copy the YouTube link, but they cannot copy the Vimeo link. I don't know why, but it's the case. That's how it works. They cannot buy from websites that are moving slow, right? Because you have to wait and you need to have the top three payment methods of the market you're working in. Otherwise, people will not you know, buy stuff from you because they want to feel that ease of payment. It needs to be simple to do the thing you want them to do. And if you don't, conversion rates will go down. Anxiety, the most fun one of them all, is about people's scare or do I like, am I making the right decision here? Is this the right decision for me to do? And they will look at their friends. They will look at your page. And here is one of the things. A lot of e-commerce websites are now using recommendation engines before a person has checked out. It's the most dumb thing in the world. And the reason for this being that I've decided what to buy. Right. So I'm in my checkout. I'm in my checkout flow. I'm all excited. Oh, I've decided what to buy. I've spent a half an hour deciding on what to buy because I've saw, seen this blog. I've seen that. Da. And then before I hit the buy button, you guys, you tell them maybe you should buy this. And they're like, oh, maybe I should. And they start thinking. And what happens then is that they actually don't buy the initial stuff that they wanted to buy because they're now contemplating whether or not they should buy this other thing instead. It's so common. We see drop off rates of 70 to 80% when that recommendation goes in. And normally it's about 30 to 40% when we don't have that recommendation going in. But even though you're optimizing towards basket value, it's, uh, and you're getting higher basket values for those who buy, your conversion rates actually go down so much that it actually doesn't make sense. However, if you put the same functionality after someone has made the purchase, oh, wait, other people who bought that stuff also bought this thing. Do you want to add it to the same delivery? That's when you get your basket values up without interfering with the conversion rates. Actually, the story that I wanted to tell you about anxiety is the story of Tinder. Because Tinder had a great success all over the world about getting attention out because they were, you know, launching as this app that was sort of not socially acceptable. And so no one was on Tinder, but everyone was on Tinder, uh, but no one was on Tinder. No one wanted to be on Tinder. No one wanted to tell other people that they were on Tinder. 
And we were all used to this world where we had the Farmville and the Candy Crush saga. If, if you connected that to Facebook, it posted all your activities to Facebook. And the only way to become a member of Tinder at the time was to connect to Facebook. And so they had millions and millions and millions of downloads, but no one became a member. Why? Because they were anxious about becoming a member. Their anxiety level was too high. Just like, am I buying the right shirt? Am I doing the right thing? I cannot join Tinder even though I really, really want to. So what did they do? Well, they added one line of copy underneath the uh, connect button saying, we will not share anything to Facebook. That's the only thing they did. And their conversion rate from download to member soared through the roof because everyone, every, every single person now felt safe to get onto Tinder because everyone who was there already was there already, right? Which didn't exist before that. People were scared of being exposed, of being there. And so this is also something I want you to bring into your, your analysis of your website. Now that you're gonna redo it, you're gonna go back to your website or your app or whatever landing page that you had that you were looking at in the beginning. And I want you to analyze it using the, the conversion formula, motivation, value proposition, incentive, friction, and anxiety. I want you to use those five things to look at how can you improve this page? How can you improve it for the user so that it better meets the motivation? It has a clear value proposition, what the person gets rather than what they have to do. It has a clear incentive why they have to do it now. It's easy to do it and they don't feel scared to do it. Think about those five things when you go back and look at your website. And I promise you, you will find at least 10 things that you can update on your website that will instantly improve your conversion rates. And I guess that's all about conversion that you need to know. Please ask any questions in the comments and I'll make videos to show you how, how we can get into the nitty gritty details here. So if you hate on this, hate in the comments. Don't hit the dislike button because that's not friendly enough. I don't know. Bye.